Um, so what is thermochemistry? So in general chemistry one, we talked about how anytime you have a chemical or physical change, energy is transferred. We kind of briefly met in that. We talked about potential energy a little bit in general chemistry one. Here we're going to take a much deeper dive uh, on the energy. So thermochemistry is the study of energy transfer during um, chemical and physical changes. Now you might think in uh, chemistry class we might just focus uh, more on uh, chemical changes. Well, it turns out physical changes are just as important. Um, you know, if you drove to campus today, okay, you're driving a car that's using octane from gasoline, that's a chemical change, combustion of gasoline, combustion of octane. Of course, you're getting energy out of that. Uh, physical changes, go home, cook dinner, you might boil some water, you're putting energy into that water. We go from liquid to the gas phase, and so energy is transferred in both of those settings all the time. Okay. So let's start talking about energy. So if you looked up the definition of energy, okay, used to say look it up in a dictionary, but we know you're not doing that. If you Google what is energy, um, or look it up in your textbook maybe, perhaps, uh, it says something like this. Energy is the capacity to do work. That's what I will say. And you know what no one has ever said after reading that? Oh, now I know what energy is. Like, no, that's not, never happened, okay? That's the uh, textbook definition of energy, but to really get a, an understanding of energy, you've gotta, you know, you gotta think about it a lot more uh, in depth, okay? <clears throat> and the way I uh, usually start to uh, uh, initially talk about it, is something that we've already talked about in general chemistry one, and those are the two types of energy. What are the two types of energy? Kinetic and potential, Kinetic and potential. good. All right, so we got uh, kinetic first. All right, that's energy in motion. Energy of motion, however you want to say it. And for chemical systems, uh, what's a good measure of kinetic energy? How would we measure the kinetic energy of a system? Hmm. You've got a sample of, say, water. How would you measure how much kinetic energy those water molecules have? Hmm? What's that? Temperature. temperature, yeah. Remember, temperature is a measure of kinetic energy. All right, so uh, that's how we measure kinetic energy at the microscopic level. Um, and so a lot of times in chemistry, we also call this, you know, thermal energy. So thermal energy coming from that, um, so measured by temperature. also called thermal energy. The second type of energy, of course, was potential energy. Who remembers uh, a good working definition of potential energy? 
a little tougher to come across. And energy based on position. Energy based on position. Perfect. So energy based on position, energy due to position. And one of the first examples, uh, you know, you're given about potential energy, and even we talked about this in general chemistry one. You know, the ball at the top of the hill, or in your textbook, the you know the anvil teetering on top of the edge of the building. Again, don't know why it's there. But uh, the ball at the top of the hill has higher potential energy due to its position relative to Earth. And so why does it roll down the hill? Okay, simple answer is because of gravity. Another answer, a little bit more complex, it goes from high potential energy to low potential energy. That was the name of the game for why things happen in terms of chemistry. That is the name of the game for how th why things happen. Okay, so potential energy due to position. And it always comes from a force of nature. In the case of the ball rolling down the hill, it's due to gravity, that force. Uh, potential energy of chemicals, chemical bonds, intermolecular forces, is due to the electromagnetic force, the relative position of electrons relative to the protons, or the partial negative charge of a, a polar molecule relative to another polar molecule. So it's the relative charge through electromagnetic force. So potential energy is definitely due to position. Uh, and a lot of times in uh, chemistry we'll just say or composition or composition. All right. So that gets us a little bit, um, I think, a, a better picture of what energy is. You know, if you think about it in the two uh, different aspects, kinetic energy, thermal energy, molecules moving around, big molecules moving around, big packs of molecules moving around, that's kinetic energy. Uh, potential energy uh, due to position. But then going back to this energy and capacity to do work, how does that play into there? Well, um, to really get a handle of what the capacity to do work means, we really how, um, need to talk about how energy is transferred. Again, going back to Gen Chem 1, we learned about the law of conservation of energy. Energy can't be you know, created or destroyed, right? It's going to be transferred, right? So one way you can do, you can transfer from one type of energy to another or, you know, one form of kinetic energy to another form of kinetic energy. So how do we transfer that energy, all right? And it turns out there's two ways we can transfer energy, and that's heat and work, all right? Those are the two ways we can transfer energy. And so let's talk about those. I mean, they're, they're on this slide, so we should talk about them. We should acknowledge them, okay? If I click to the next slide without talking about it, I'm like, hey, what about heat and work? That's what you, you'd be clamoring. Okay, so I will talk about them. So the uh, two ways to transfer energy. Heat and work. <clears throat> All right, so this heat is just the transfer of kinetic energy. Transfer of kinetic energy, which I'll abbreviate KE, kinetic energy, KE. At the microscopic level. at the microscopic level. All right, so that can be best explained by just, you know, whether something feels hot or cold. If something feels hot or cold, that means it's either higher kinetic energy or lower kinetic energy than you. Okay, if I place my hand on this tablet, it's, it's pretty warm, okay, a little warm, which actually feels nice. It's kind of a cool day. My hands are a little cold, okay? 
Um, so why, what's going on? It feels warm because the kinetic energy of the molecules in the screen, whatever they are, if this is glass, you think this is glass? Probably plastic. I don't know. So whatever, the plastic or glass, whatever you think it is, I'll agree with you. Okay, those molecules are moving a little bit more. They have a little bit more kinetic energy, they have a little bit more than the hand molecules in my hand. And since they have a little bit more kinetic energy, they're moving a little bit more. They bump into my hand molecules on average more than my hand molecules bump into them. And so guess what? Every time they bump into my molecules in my hand, they transfer some of that kinetic energy. Okay, just like if you play pool. You hit the cue ball into the other balls, um, you know, the, the cue ball transfers the kinetic energy to the other uh, billiard balls. All right. So when we transfer something from, you know, something from hot to something that's cold, all right, we're transferring ener kinetic energy, we say, via heat. All right, and we abbreviate heat as the lowercase q. Okay. Lowercase q is heat. So the second um, way we transfer energy is via work. Okay, and this will kind of you know take it back to that uh, energy capacity to do work uh, definition. All right, so what is work? Okay, well first, we, uh, we make sense here. We didn't make much sense with uh, heat, but we, for work, we ab abbreviate it with a W. Okay, so sometimes we make sense. So far we're shooting 50%, 50%. All right, so the easiest way to explain what work is is to think about the definition. So work equals a force across a distance. You're applying a force across a distance and you're moving it, so it's actually the change in distance, okay? So that's the Greek letter delta, and we'll use that a lot, um, and so that means change, okay? So that's distance, and that's force. Okay, and that's capacity to do work, okay, which is applying a force across a distance, okay. So a good example of both of these is, uh, you know, if you drove to campus today, hitched a ride on, on campus, uh, rode a bus, okay, most of those are going to be using uh, internal combustion reactions, so they're burning gasoline, burning octane, okay. So that combustion reaction creates a lot of gas, and it's also uh, a lot of heat, so the gases um, expand okay, inside the cylinders. They create pressure, which pushes the cylinders inside your engine with some force, and that force moves the cylinders some distance. Okay? Um, and so that chemical reaction, one, the, just the expansion of the gas does work. You're taking liquid octane and oxygen and making gaseous CO2 and gaseous water, so you're producing a lot of gas. So that creates a lot of force. And then that's also transferring heat to the gas, which causes, we know Charles' law, causes temp increases in temperature, causes gases to expand. And so that's creating some force. So both are going on to move that cylinder uh, a distance, applying a force across that cylinder uh, across a distance. All right, so those are the two ways uh, we can transfer energy. All right, and the two types of energy. Now, when we say energy, Nine times out of ten, uh, I un un actually mean potential energy, but the sum of both the pot uh, potential energy and kinetic energy is called the internal energy, which we abbreviate as E. Okay, so if it's just E, it's internal energy, both potential energy and um, kinetic energy. So internal energy is the sum of the kinetic energy and the potential energy of the system. 
So I've already used that word a couple times, and so we should probably define it. When I say the system, what are we talking about system? So the system is what we're studying. The chemical or physical change that we're interested in, that's what we're gonna call our system, okay? So this is the uh, chemical reaction. which I usually abbreviate reaction as RxN. I used to say to save ink, but now that I'm using my tablet, save electrons. Don't want to use too many electrons. All right. Or the physical system, physical change we're studying. So you could ask yourself, you know, talking about a car again, how much energy can you get out of one gallon of, you know, gasoline? Okay, so that's something we'd ask. Or cooking dinner tonight, how much energy do you need to put into one gallon of water to make it boil? All right, so those are questions we could ask about that. Um, and those would be our systems. And again, here's the uh, breakdown of internal energy. See, so I can also go laser pointer, okay? So not just right on my tablet, like I can do laser pointer. Wow, look at that. So here we have energy is the capacity to do work. I won't edit this out, this is pure gold. Uh, which is the sum, of the, two, uh, of the sum of kinetic energy, energy due to motion, and potential energy. Where's potential energy? It's right over here. Uh, energy due to position or composition. And when we're talking about chemical systems, uh, what we refer to the kinetic energy is the thermal energy, which we measure as a function of temperature. Potential energy will measure, turns out we're going to measure it by the change in internal energy, but it's associated with the position of the electrons um, with the protons in the nucleus. And that charge attraction, the way those electrons are at in the bonds, determines its potential energy. Okay. Units. Units are always important, right? Uh, so what units are we going to use for energy? Okay. Uh, in chemistry and physics, you know, in, in terms of thermochemistry, uh, we primarily use the joule, J-O-U-L-E, which is abbreviated uppercase joule. And uh, what those units are, it's a drive unit, uh, comes from an equation for E. And it's a, probably a pretty... Um, famous equation. Okay, so if I said E equals, what would you say? MC squared. MC squared. Yeah, so MC squared. Some guy named Al came up with that. He was a cool guy. Um, so MC squared. So what is the mass? <laughs> what does the M stand for? Pretend, pretend you didn't hear me. <laughs> mass? Yes, you got it right. So mass, so uh, the, the M is mass, and we could use units of kilograms. All right. C, what did C stand for? Speed of light. Speed of light. And so that was meters per second. See, I got that one right. I asked you the question first. So, and then so a kilogram meters per second squared. So one kilogram meter square, meter squared per second squared is one joule. So that's where that unit comes from. All right, so what are some other units we use? So that's kind of abstract. Oh, a kilogram meter squared per second squared. Oh yeah, I understand that. Just like energy's capacity to do work. So let's take a little bit more practical approach to this in terms of energy. What are other units of energy we use on a pretty much everyday basis? What about, here's a hint. How about uh, if you're thinking about, I don't know, exercise or nutrition? Calories, Calories. yeah, there's there where I was heading. Uh, so calories is another unit of energy. And so that's a little bit, I think, where that comes from is a little easier to maybe uh, grasp your mind around. So it turns out that one calorie, so one calorie, which we abbreviate all lowercase c-a-l, is the amount of energy needed
to raise one gram of water one degree Celsius. So that's where the calorie comes from, metric, and a lot of metric physical pro or a lot of uh, physical properties. Um, the units associated with them are always traced back to water, like Celsius, zero degrees, hundred degrees, always melting point, uh, boiling point of water. So we're basing a lot of things on water. All right. So what's how does that relate to a joule? Well, a joule is smaller, okay, and so one uh, joule, one calorie is equal to 4.18, yeah, 4.18, 4.184 to be a little bit more exact, but 4.18 joules. So about four joules equals one calorie. So it takes about four joules to raise one gram of water. One gram of water is one milliliter, so not much. One milliliter of water, one degree Celsius. All right. But it turns out uh, in exercise and nutrition, not that I'm going to worry about it too much, um, that's not the calorie calorie we use, all right? It's kcals, yeah, exactly. So calorie is actually a really small unit of energy, lowercase c. So when we talk about how much energy we use exercising or how much we eat, it's actually a upper uppercase calorie, uppercase c calorie, or a kcal. So in nutrition, what we see is we say one uppercase calorie equals one thousand. I don't know why I write those so small. 1,000 lowercase calories that we use in chemistry, or that equals one kcal. All right. So if you had a snack that was 100 calories, that's really 100,000 of the calories that we use in chemistry, or about 400,000 joules. So you can see those are pretty small uh, units of energy. And so when we talk about the unit of energies uh, and transferred in a chemical reaction, you're going to see we're actually use kilojoules because they just produce a lot more energy. Uh, you know, kilojoules per mole, a couple hundred to a couple thousand kilojoules per mole is what's transferred on, you know, chemical reactions.